In today's video, we have the latest NHL trade rumors. We're talking today about the Philadelphia Flyers, the Montreal Canadiens, and the San Jose Sharks. We have news from the NHL waiver wires, some injury updates. The Quebec government has met with the NHL. What does that mean for a potential NHL return to the province of Quebec? And the NHL All-Stars have been revealed. We'll discuss all that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to discuss here today. Uh, first up, some quick news from the NHL waiver wire. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets for Gregory Hoffman, who had previously been suspended because he had left the team uh, due to a personal matter, which I believe was the birth of a child, um, but decided not to come back. So then they suspended him, and now he's on unconditional waivers for the purpose of of contract termination. I believe he's headed back to Europe and plans to stay there. Um, so his time in the NHL is done, even though he was actually having, uh, I thought, a, a decent season, you know, shot to, to maybe grab a spot in a Jackets lineup on a more regular basis. But I guess his uh, time is in coming to an end and his contract will be terminated. We also have a suspension today. Montreal Canadiens defenseman Chris Weidman has been suspended for one game following a headbutting incident that took place last night against the Boston Bruins. Uh, he was tangled up uh, in a bit of a skirmish with uh, center iceman Eric Howla, and he ended up using his helmet to headbutt Howla in the face. He did cause some blood, um, and he's facing a one-game ban. He does have, a, uh, I believe, a clean record prior to this, no suspension history, uh, so that's why he really wasn't given anything too severe on that, but he will face that one-game ban, so he'll be unable to play. Uh, in tonight's action. Quick news on an injury update. Mike Smith, goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers, is hurt again. So we know the Oilers uh, had a hot start to the season. Miko Koskinen was doing well, but the issue with Koskinen seems to be consistency as well as a heavy workload seems to drag him down eventually that he just can't keep up the level of play. So Mike Smith finally made a comeback, had a few not so great outings, and now he's hurt and he's going to be out for potentially two weeks. So they brought up Stuart Skinner back to the taxi squad. So when Oilers play, he'll likely be activated and brought into the game. Hopefully they give Skinner a chance to play a bit more and he can hopefully give them some good games here, which he actually did do early on in the season as well. Uh, goaltending has been a major issue here for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, and if they're going to get themselves out of their funk and get back to some winning ways, they need to have better goaltending. But the team in front of them has to play better as well. It's not all goaltending, but it certainly does go a long way to helping the team feel confident to do their best in front of them. So we'll see where that goes. But that could make a bad situation potentially worse in Edmonton. We know they seem to be keen on signing Evander Kane, but that's uh, at a bit of a standstill right now. While Kane awaits to find out the investigation results that we talked about yesterday, he's being investigated for violating COVID-19 protocols for traveling after a positive test without medical clearance and before his quarantine period would have been up. Uh, he's also possibly fake facing legal ramifications for this. We don't know if either the U.S. or Canadian federal authorities will pursue any charges against him once this is completed. But essentially, like when you uh, you know enter the country, you're asked all those COVID screening questions, uh, and you know he probably would have had to lie. Is what it looks like. If indeed what is being accused here is indeed true, so I don't know if there'll be any legal. Uh, issues for him outside of the NHL possibly taking further discipline on him but where he was suspended 21 games before some people think he could get 30 to 40 games uh, and if that's the case I don't know that an NHL team is going to want to sign him for the rest of the season because if you think about it most teams have played you know 30 some games now for 30 to 40 games so like he would miss the bulk of the year. It would only be able to come back, uh, you know, the last handful of games. He'd have them for the playoffs, I guess. So I guess it's not completely absurd that they would do it, but I would think it'd be a lot less likely because you're not going to have access to that player, uh, you know, which is not what teams were thought they were doing here. So we'll see, uh, but it looks like that investigation will have to conclude before an official contract is. That doesn't have to, but it probably makes sense for both sides to wait to see where that goes first before we um before decisions made now as i mentioned as well um some good news and not anything huge but uh, the quebec government officially has met with gary bettman and bill daly i believe the meeting was done remotely from what we've heard it took place earlier today uh, it was just a preliminary meeting basically for the 
province of Quebec to express interest to the NHL that they're still very much interested in bringing a franchise back to Quebec City uh, to talk about, I guess, their plans for, you know, how they're planning the financing and all that kind of stuff uh, and to kind of keep the lines of communication open, uh, which is good. So apparently the meeting went well, uh, but Daly and Batman did say that uh, they've let them know that there's no real clear path or, uh, you know, opportunity right now to bring a team to them. But, you know, certainly they'll have further discussions in the future and we'll see. So basically, um, you know, unless the NHL decides to expand again, which we don't really know if they ever will or not. And if they do, when it's going to be, I speculated myself a while back that I would I would not be shocked in the not too distant future if they do decide to go maybe to 34 teams and add one to each conference um, with the all the lost revenue from the pandemic, some more expansion money would certainly go a long way to padding some pockets and, uh, you know, helping recoup money to, to help the businesses all across the board here, and including the league, be, you know, more much more, uh, you know, financially sound. So it's not a complete, um, you know, off-the-table idea in my book, but we'll have to see. There's no also big rush either. Uh, and same time, you know, a team could be sold and relocated, and that could come to be. And, you know, the NHL with even conferences would likely – um, you know, try to keep the team if a team has to move. Like, for example, we know the Coyotes are trying to figure out their arena situation and they're probably the, the team that's the, the most likely if we were going to see it happen. Uh, they would likely be the, the one top of the list. Um, but I would assume the NHL would do everything they could to keep them in the West to keep everything uh, even and kind of synchronized without having to move a team between conferences or something to that effect but we'll see uh, at least the, the lines of communication are open a good meeting but nothing really to report and any kind of you know uh, nothing's imminent basically is what we're trying to say here so we'll see where that goes in the future uh now on to the nhl all-star selections that were made today uh the nhl has recently announced all the all-stars as well as the players that are on the ballot for the last man in portion of it so essentially the coaches were determined by the standings and then captains were voted upon uh for each division uh, and then obviously from there uh, all the nhl teams have at least one representative uh determined by the league uh and then of course um every team also has a representative for the last man in which is voted on by the fans so let's quickly go through each division here and uh, go through their list of all-stars uh so ultimately here we'll start with the Central Division, which will be coached by uh, Jared Bednar of the Avalanche. Uh, the Coyotes' uh, representative will be Clayton Keller. Their nominee for the last man in is Phil Kessel. Chicago has Alex DeBrinkett as an all-star. And their nominee for the last man in is Seth Jones. The Avalanche will be sending McKinnon and McCarr. And their last man in is Nazem Kadri, who's having a phenomenal year. Uh, the Dallas Stars are sending Joe Pavelski as an all-star. And their last man in candidate is Jason Robertson. The Nashville Predators are sending goalie UC Saros, and their last man in uh, candidate is Roman Yossi. The St. Louis Blues are sending youngster Jordan Cairo, who's having a phenomenal year. Uh, and another youngster, Robert Thomas, is their nominee for the last man in. The Winnipeg Jets are sending forward Kyle Connor, and their last man in candidate is Mark Shifley. So, of course, uh, Nathan McKinnon, in that case, is the, uh, the captain for the division, and those are your... Players that are in and the ones that are on the ballot for the last man in. On to the Pacific to complete the Western Conference here. Will be coached by Vegas coach Pete DeBoer. Uh, the Anaheim Ducks are sending John Gibson. The last man in is Troy Terry is their candidate. Uh, Troy Terry's having a phenomenal year. Be kind of, you know, upsetting to see him not make it there. But, you know, I guess, like I said, it's challenging because you can't have everybody. You have to have a representation from each team. Um, and, of course, you have to fill out all the positions. So it's not the simplest task by any means. The Flames are sending Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk will be on the ballot for last man in. The Oilers are sending Dreisaitl and McDavid and their last man in candidate is uh, uh, Darnell Nurse. The LA Kings are sending Adrian Kempe and their last man in candidate is Drew Doughty. Uh, the Sharks are sending Timo Meyer and their last man in is Logan Couture. So uh, no love there for Thomas Hurdle, uh, who's got 20 goals on the season as well. But Meyer and Couture having uh, really solid years in their own rights as well. The Kraken are sending Jordan Eberle, first 
All-Star in team history. And Mark Giordano, team captain, is their last man in candidate. Uh, the Canucks are sending uh, Thatcher Demko, the goaltender. And the last man in candidate is JT Miller. And the Vegas Golden Knights are sending Mark Stone and Alex Petrangelo with their last man in candidate being Jonathan Marcia so now on to the Eastern Conference, the Atlantic Division. The Atlantic Division will be coached by Panthers head coach Andrew Burnett. The Boston Bruins are sending Patrice Bergeron, and their last man in Canada is Charlie McAvoy. So no love for Brad Marchand there. Uh, kind of unfortunate. He's having a phenomenal year. The Sabres are sending young defenseman, former first overall pick Rasmus Dahlin. Last man in candidates, Tage Thompson. The Red Wings are sending Dylan Larkin. And their last man in candidates, Lucas Raymond. Uh, the Panthers are sending Jonathan Huberdeau. And the last man in candidate is uh, Barkov. The Montreal Canadiens are sending Nick Suzuki. And the last man in candidates, Tyler Toffoli. The Senators uh, player going to the All-Star game for his first one ever is Drake Batherson, who in my opinion has been their best player uh, all around this year. And their last man in candidate is Captain Brady Kachuk. The Lightning are sending Vasilevsky and Hedman. And their last man in candidate is Steven Stamkos. The Maple Leafs are sending two players as well. Austin Matthews being the division captain. Along with goaltender Jack Campbell. And their last man in candidate is their captain, John Tavares. Now, of course, I forgot to mention as well, Connor McDavid was voted captain for the Pacific. So... That brings us down to the final division here with the Metropolitan, which will be coached by Canes head coach Rod Brindamore. Uh, the Canes themselves are sending Frederick Anderson and Sebastian Ajo with their last man in candidate being Sveshnikov. The Jackets are sending uh, Zach Morensky with a Voracek being on the ballot. New Jersey is sending Jack Hughes with the last man in candidate being Jesper Bratt. The Islanders are sending first-time All-Star defenseman Adam Pellick, certainly an underrated player across the league, in my opinion, and their last man in candidates, Matthew Barzell. The Rangers are sending multiple All-Stars, including defenseman Adam Fox and winger Chris Kreider, with their last man in candidate being Mika Zibanejad. The Flyers are sending Claude Giroux, with Cam Atkinson being on the ballot. The Pens are sending uh, goalie Tristan Jerry, who's had a solid bounce back year. And their uh, candidate on the ballot is Jake Genzel. And, of course, Alex Ovechkin going to represent the Capitals with Evgeny Kuznetsov being your last man in candidate for the Washington Capitals. So those are your all-star selections. I know there's certainly always players that are left out that deserve to be on there, but like I said, keep in mind it's no easy task to make sure there's equal representation from all teams. Uh, you get to fill out all positions. There's always going to be players having solid years that are left out, but certainly I think it's fair to say that the players that were selected certainly deserve to be there. It'll be interesting to see who gets in on the votes for the last man in. Now on to the trade rumor section of today's video, I do want to talk a little bit more about Tomas Hurdle, who I mentioned as being a player that certainly, uh, you know, is omitted from the All-Star selection. But like I said, he's got several of his teammates also having solid years, and it's just tough. You can't have them all there. But Hurdle's a player to watch here ahead of the deadline, who we've talked about before. Uh, obviously, now with the Vander Kane situation and the contract being terminated from the Sharks, that certainly opens up, uh, you know, a big amount of salary cap space and $7 million dollars for future years as well, to possibly consider re-signing Hurdle. I mean, it was known when he first went to training camp this year after an off-season of, you know, not sure what his future held. He did some interviews saying he wasn't really sure if the Sharks even wanted to sign him to Doug Wilson making it known that they did want to have conversations about him. But to this point, there's really no updates on a potential new contract. So you have to think with the uh, season he's having that he's going to get a ton of interest and would be able to generate a big return. Now, uh, insider trading on TSN today, Pierre Lebrun, NHL insider for TSN, was talking about Hurdle and the fact that he only has three teams on his yes list for his trade protection. So he has a very, very limited amount of teams that he would already authorize for trade without having to waive. So that really gives him a ton of control. And he suggested here a match, which we've talked about before, not a huge surprise, would be the New York Rangers. It sounds like the Rangers would be a team that they suspect might be on his yes list and a team that would be very much interested in adding a top six forward. Now, Hurdle would be not necessarily the, you know, the perfect candidate, but to me, he is in a way because he's very versatile. He normally is a center, but he has played wing in the past. And I think between, you look at the other top six and top nine players 
for the Rangers, they could certainly find a good spot for him where they could either put him in a variety of spots and I think it could work. So obviously that is a trade that you certainly want to look out for. If Hurdle is not signed here in the near future, it's certainly going to continue to be right at the top of the trade bait list, especially once the Evander Kane situation is resolved. Of course, we know right now that the Sharks terminated the contract and they're getting $7 million of you know additional cap space back. But where he's grieved it, what if they lose part of that? They may have some of that eaten up, so they might not get the full $7 million. It's hard to say the outcome, and the Sharks are certainly going to want to wait before that happens, before they can make any kind of future commitments here. But if they ultimately get uh, you know, a good result from the grievance and they have all the majority of that space, then they would be able to take a run at signing hurdle. And if that's not enough to get it done, then it's just not going to get done but we've seen some some bright spots in san jose this year with some additional cap space i can see them making some moves and trying to kind of retool here on the fly and bounce back for next year so we'll have to watch that situation closely but once the Kane situation is resolved if we don't get a signing for hurdle shortly after it's going to be a, you know a, a top player to watch going to the deadline now a few days ago we talked about some potential really big montreal canadians trades and some habits for trade rumors uh, and i want to revisit part of that and that's josh anderson who has been linked to the edmonton oilers or i guess identified as a target by jim matheson of the edmonton journal now this article in the, in the journal we didn't really talk about in the other video the potential return but what they suggested was the Oilers go after a guy like Anderson, who's a big, strong, scoring winger. But yes, he is, to my opinion, I, I kind of call him myself like a one-trick pony. He can score goals, but he's not much of a playmaker, not great defensively, um, and he gets hurt a lot. So I do like Josh Anderson. What he does well, he does very well. But there's parts of his game, in my opinion, that are not the greatest. I'm not convinced 100% that he's exactly what they need. My comment about Anderson going to Edmonton was that they would be at risk to lose Jesse Pugliari, who is not signed long-term, but Anderson is, and that could cost them to be able to re-sign the young Finnish winger, who has really been a nice find for them since he came back to the team after spending a year in Finland, and many thought that relationship was done and over with, and they've been able to the mend fences, bring him back, and, and it's working out nicely. I think he's going to have a solid career if he remains there especially having a chance to play top six minutes with guys like mcdavid and dry he fits in well and bringing in anderson could cause that to not be an option anymore so i'm not even sure it makes sense from that perspective but this article recommended or suggested i should say that a potential return of xavier burgo who's one of their top prospects a first round pick and maybe a third piece now the third piece would likely have to be a roster player to help even out the money because the Oilers are not exactly, you know, full of cap space here. They'd have to send, uh, you know, maybe a Zach Cassian or a combination of Zach Cassian, Kyle Turris, or something to that effect over to the Habs or wherever they're going to trade with because uh, they just don't have that kind of flexibility. So to give up that kind of future assets for Josh Anderson to me, just doesn't make sense. I've seen the, the Anderson trade rumor talked about in a few more places since the original video I made and since that article came out a couple days ago. And I just really want to readdress the fact that there is some links there. I see more people kind of getting on talking about it. And I just really don't see how that makes sense. I wouldn't completely rule out Montreal trades Anderson, but given the term and money and I don't know. I, I think that's a tough one to, to swallow, and I just don't think he's going to be leaving Montreal anytime soon. If he can bounce back and have a better year next year, and then we have another year knocked off the contract, maybe a trade can happen after that. But to me, I think you're looking at more like guys like you know Mike Hoffman, for example, who's uh, you know not on a longer term deal. You've got a guy like Tyler Toffoli, who's not on a long term big deal. Like those are the players I think we'll see leave Montreal. Of course, a guy like Ben Sherratt. Maybe a guy like Jake Allen. They don't have huge contracts or they're closer to expiring. That's the more likely scenarios we're going to see unfold in the Habs organization, I think, this year. Now, lastly, I want to touch on the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, we've heard talk from Elliot Friedman about the potential Claude Giroux trade, and I still think there's a pretty good possibility that does happen closer to the deadline, assuming that Giroux wants to have a chance to go chase the Stanley Cup. But a couple defensemen you can't rule out moving are Ivan Provorov and Rasmus Ristolainen. In the case of Ristolainen, it's fair to say that you know it hasn't exactly worked out the best. Uh, the Flyers, as a team, are not having a good year. 
And the fact that he is a uh, pending unrestricted free agent, we haven't heard any speculation about a contract extension. I'm not convinced that Flyers management are happy enough with his game to consider doing that. But they did pay a pretty penny to acquire him from the Buffalo Sabres this past offseason. So at the same time, you know, they might try to recoup what they can and let him go. At least that's what some NHL insiders are speculating. We've heard Friedman mention this and others as well. In the case of uh, Ivan Provorov, it's not a given that he gets traded, but it's fair to say that the last couple of years he has not found his game. He's not really the same player he was a few years back when he was playing with Matt Niskanen. They've tried him with a variety of partners and it just has not worked out. Given the fact he's making over $6 million and still has some term left on that contract, I think it's a real solid scenario here that they would consider moving him for the right deal. His name has popped up a couple times here in trade rumors recently. It doesn't mean for sure that they would trade him, but I do think he's far from being an untouchable. I think there's not a lot in Philadelphia that would be an untouchable. It sounds like they're open to doing a variety of things. And as we talked about with the comments from Bobby Clark, really, uh, you know, really uh, destroying uh, Ron Hextall's run as GM in the Philadelphia Flyers just in the past couple of days on the Cameron Strick podcast. Many feel he's protecting Chuck Fletcher and that there might be pressure from ownership to maybe even change the general manager and move on from Fletcher. And then, you know, Clark's opinion really wants to make sure that Fletcher sticks around. So he's trying to protect him. So we'll see. I think there could be big turnover in the Flyers organization between the trade deadline and the offseason. That is all your news, rumors, and everything for today. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.